I use Clip Studio Paint as a freelance animator working in Japanese animation. Clip has tons of useful rulers. In this video, I will show you the ones I mostly use for anime work. Over here in the rulers tool icon, you can see all the different rulers Clip has. First, I'll talk about the symmetrical ruler. There are many shots where the character is in front of the camera looking straight up to it. The symmetry ruler is super useful because I can draw only one side and I don't have to worry about the other side. In the tools properties panel, the number of lines I use is the minimum, which is two. Most characters have only two symmetrical sides. Line symmetry has to be checked. This is going to mirror the image along the vertical axis like we want to. I don't check the snap angle box because pressing shift on your keyboard while making the ruler will do that. And for all types of rulers, you can create it on the current layer or in a new one. To place the ruler, just click on the canvas, drag, press shift to make it a 90 degree angle and let go. And there we have our symmetrical ruler. And I will improvise a character to put the ruler into action. To draw the hair or details that are not symmetrical in the character, we can turn the ruler off by pressing shift and clicking the icon next to the layer. This will disable it until we enable it again by clicking that same icon. And so I can draw the character, turning the ruler on and off to use only when needed. I will make a cleaner pass of this character in a new layer. I can copy the symmetrical ruler by selecting it, clicking Alt and dropping it in a new layer. This way I can use the same ruler to tie down the drawing. It's very convenient since we can work with many layers and copy the same rulers. Speaking of layers, another way to switch between using symmetry or not could be adding a new layer for the asymmetrical details and switching between layers instead of turning on and off the ruler. The next ruler is the perspective ruler. One point, two points and three points perspectives are the most common. I've used it since I started working in anime and I don't know what I'd do without it. Animators in Japanese animation not only move the characters and make the effects, but also make the layout. The layout is the background. It doesn't have to be too detailed. It could be the general design as long as it provides good enough information. And the first step to achieve this is perspective. This will also determine how we draw the character. So you can imagine how the perspective rulers make my job not only possible considering the time constraints, but also enjoyable. To create a perspective ruler, you could do it with the ruler tool. Then select perspective ruler. Right now, we will add vanishing points. And we want the perspective type to change depending on how many vanishing points we add. In our canvas, I create the first line and then a second line. The first vanishing point will be created where those two lines intersect. This is the vanishing point, this is the horizon line. I will create a new vanishing point over here in the horizon line to make this two points perspective. To move and edit your ruler, we have to choose the object tool. Click on any line and some small icons will appear. Each of them moves different parts of the ruler. This cross with arrows moves the ruler as a whole. You can click the vanishing point and move it. In the vanishing lines, you could click this middle circle to move the line individually. These other circles move the line together with the vanishing point. This is useful because sometimes your vanishing points are very far away from the canvas, but you can still edit them through the vanishing lines. And as soon as I finish setting up the perspective ruler, I can confidently start drhawing. Back to the ruler options. These rhomboid icons enable or disable the ruler or parts of the ruler. All the lines, for example, you can see how they turned green when disabled, and the strokes no longer snap to the perspective. We could also disable individual vanishing points. This is useful because while drawing, the program guesses which vanishing point you want, and this way we can activate only the desired one. There's another way to create a perspective ruler, which I actually prefer. And that is, in the layer menu, ruler slash frame, create perspective ruler. It will ask which type of perspective. I will choose to point perspective again. And there it is. This ruler will affect not only its corresponding layer, but also other layers we add. 
you can see the icon is different as well. This is convenient because we can add as many layers as we need and the ruler will work. The other reason I prefer this method is that I don't have to make the vanishing points manually. I always move the lines around to edit them, so this way I go straight to that. In the tool property panel there are more useful things. For example, we can enable fix eye level, so that moving the vanishing points doesn't affect the horizon line. If the horizon line tilts, you can open that checkbox and click horizontalize to make it horizontal. And finally, one of the most useful things perspective rulers have are the grids. I particularly love the grid on the XZ plane, because it places a floor, and suddenly we are grounded in a place. As a beginner, this grid helps you visualize perspective very clearly. You can continue editing your ruler, moving the vanishing points, and the floor will follow. When the grid appeared, an extra icon came with it. This icon moves the grid up and down, and as easily as we have a floor, we can also visualize a ceiling or the sky. How cool is this? Let's put all of this into practice. I'll start with something simple, a one-point perspective layout. And I'm using everything I've explained so far. For this layout, I have the perspective ruler. And I also added a symmetrical ruler because the room has symmetry. I used the grid in XZ plane to sketch the floor. Okay, so the last ruler or rulers that I use are for a specific purpose, drawing circles in perspective. Circles in perspective are more difficult than squared things. Luckily, Clip has tools that help us. Before drawing ellipses, I need to place some guides following my current perspective. The ellipses are built inside squared shapes. Now, to draw the ellipse, I most often use the figure ruler with the ellipse option, and I place the ruler roughly following my square guide, from one corner to the opposite corner. With the object tool, I can modify the ellipse. There are different transform modes, control points with scale and rotation, or only control points, and the usual modes available when transforming. I regularly use free transform because I can match the points in the ruler with the square guide I drew. And now that the ruler is in place, I simply draw the ellipse. I will use this method to draw more random ellipses along the wall. It may seem that I'm tracing many guides, but the perspective ruler makes this very easy, and it's even fun. It's worth it because these guides make drawing ellipses easy and fun as well. I have to mention that I do have some knowledge of perspective, but it is mostly the basic theory. I was a character animator, so I didn't have much practice drawing backgrounds. In fact, it wasn't until I started working in anime that I had to draw more backgrounds than I ever anticipated. So if you only have the basic theory, that is more than enough to start. Together with the ruler's help, you're good to go. And also, layouts for animation are for artistic purposes. We're not going to build something out of them, so the perspective has certain wiggle room for expression. Anyway, the other ruler useful for drawing ellipses is this special ruler and select concentric circles. This ruler allows us to make infinite parallel ellipses. So for example, here I create it from the center and I will make a circular door, kind of like a vault. To finish this layout, I will add basic shadows. Of course, I can continue using the rulers for this stage. Something interesting is that other tools, like the selection or lasso tool, will still follow the rulers. Now that the layout is done, I can even bring the character from the beginning. Et voila! Let me show you these rulers in the making of a two-point perspective layout. First I make a rough sketch, doodling the idea and guessing the perspective. Then I add the perspective ruler and use it to block out the structures in perspective. I may even do that for organic things, like the small heel in this case. And of course, for circular or cylindrical shapes, I need to block out the squared structure. And then with the sketch of the idea and the structure in perspective, I can draw the final layout. Remember that it's still not super detailed. That's the background painter's job. We only need enough information for myself as the animator and the rest of the crew. 
For this layout, I used a two-point perspective ruler and figure rulers for the ellipses wherever I had to draw them. After the sketch, I made the shadows. I love how layouts come to life when you add basic lighting. Finally, I added the characters. And that's it, layout done. For this last example, I will do a three-point perspective layout. The initial sketch is very important because it gives you an idea of how to place the perspective ruler. In a professional production, most of the time that initial sketch is a storyboard. But sometimes storyboards are not very accurate. In those cases, the best approach is to define the idea and get it on paper before involving the rulers. Ok, now it's time to say something about the concentric circles ruler that I didn't mention before. It is a very powerful ruler, however, its transform options are more limited than the figure ruler. We cannot free transform it, skew or distort it, or any other options. We can only rotate the angle or squish and stretch the ellipse's sides. That's why I sometimes only use the figure ruler, even though I may need to make more circles. However, there's a trick we can do and I did it in this third layout. First, we place the figure ruler, transform it by following the squared guys and draw the ellipse. This ellipse has the same properties the concentric circles ruler has. Two axes, one longer than the other, and an inclination. So what we can do is use this circle as a guide for the concentric ruler. This way, we know how to place it. And then we can draw more ellipses. It often happens to me that things still look weird, even when using all the rulers. I recommend modifying your drawing and eyeballing it until it looks right. The rulers are only for support, so sometimes we must break the rules with them. And this is the result. I used the perspective ruler in 3 point perspective, the ellipse figure ruler and the concentric circles special ruler. Ok, so that was it for the rulers I mostly use. I don't really use all the other rulers that often. I've used the radial and parallel rulers a couple of times. So it's worth checking them all out because the occasion to use them may arrive. But for now, these are the rulers I use all the time or very frequently as an animator in an anime. I hope this video was useful to you. Let me know in the comments if you use a ruler I didn't mention. And thank you for watching. Happy animating!